Distinguished Chair of the Board of Trustees, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Welcome to this event marking the 10th anniversary of the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Persons. Managed by UNODC, this is the only UN Trust Fund with a specific focus on women and girl victims of trafficking in persons worldwide. The fund provides direct assistance to victims through non-governmental organizations specialized in humanitarian, legal, and financial aid. I warmly welcome the representatives of some of our partner NGOs who have joined us for this event at the 14th Crime Congress. So far, the Trust Fund has awarded $4.8 million in grants to more than 90 NGO projects around the world, assisting more than 3,500 victims a year. I thank all donors for their contributions, and I'm grateful to Belgium France and Sweden for their strong support of the fund and for their involvement in today's event. The Trust Fund also relies on the generosity of the private sector and individuals. Moreover, all proceeds from the UNODC Blue Heart campaign go directly to the Trust Fund to support victims. Every contribution counts as victims urgently need our help and trafficking risks are on the rise. The new UNODC Global Report on Trafficking in Persons shows that 65% of detected trafficking victims are women and girls. Children account for 34% of all detected victims, a share that has tripled over the past 15 years. In the COVID crisis, vulnerabilities are increasing as women and youth find themselves particularly affected by job losses, school closures, and a lack of access to social protection. Now is the time to step up victim-centered responses to human trafficking, including direct assistance to survivors. I hope that together we can galvanize new support for the Trust Fund and help more victims rebuild their lives. Thank you. At this very moment, millions of women, children, and men all over the world are being exploited by criminals who trade in human beings. The UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Person, especially women and children, is an important part of this effort. Through its survivor-centric approach, the Trust Fund has been helping survivors by enabling them to reclaim their dignity and rebuild their lives. On the 10th year anniversary of the UN Voluntary Trust Fund, I appeal to member states, the international community, and the private sector to contribute and help more trafficking survivors rebuild their lives. We must provide care and support for trafficking victims and other survivors of violence, abuse, and exploitation. We are counting on your solidarity to re respond to the needs of victims in years to come to end these heinous crimes. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank UNODC and our co-sponsors for organizing this virtual event today in celebration of the achievements and best practices of the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for victims of trafficking in persons on its 10th year anniversary. I welcome UNODC Executive Director, Ms. Gada Wali, our distinguished guests, and our two NGO partners. I am delighted to be here today in my first appearance as Chair of the Board of Trustees. I would also like to thank and congratulate the five newly elected members of the Board on their appointment in 2020 and look forward to the valuable insights they will bring to the trust fund in continuation of its important course. On July 30, 2010, the UN General Assembly adopted a resolution known as the Global Plan of Action to combat trafficking in persons. The trust fund was established as an essential component of this Global Plan of Action 
to address this important issue and provide direct support to victims of human trafficking through specialized non-governmental organizations. Since its establishment, the Trust Fund has received 7.8 million US dollars in contributions from a wide range of supporters. This includes 32 member states, 34 private sector organizations, and scores of individual donors. During 2017 and 2018, the Trust Fund achieved record increases in donations of 1 million US dollars and 2.275 million US dollar respectively. Every year, the donor base of the fund continues to grow. Despite the challenges of COVID-19 in 2020, the trust fund received close to 0 0.8 million US dollars in contributions. Notwithstanding, the trust fund has still managed to effectively run four grant cycles within its grants program that have shown clear and tangible results. The trust fund has provided 4.8 million US dollars in grants to over 90 specialized NGO projects worldwide and directly assist 3,500 victims per year in close to 50 countries. It is the only UN trust fund with a specific focus on women and girl victims of human trafficking, with at least 90% of its projects supporting women and girls trafficked chiefly for sexual exploitation. This is an important figure given that women and girls account for nearly seven out of 10 of all detected human trafficking victims globally. I am also pleased to announce that in 2020, the Trust Fund awarded $1.4 million in grants to a record 32 NGO projects across 24 countries under its fourth call for proposals. This included under its new emergency aid response window as well as its regular comprehensive aid program, providing medium-term assistance to victims. The Trust Fund's victim-centered approach and close coordination with UNODC's network of human trafficking experts working in over 150 countries worldwide demonstrates its added value. These are just a few examples of the impact of the Trust Fund made possible due to the work of our NGO partners and you will soon hear from two of the frontline representatives from civil society on how a small grant can make a large impact in the life of trafficking survivors. Let me finish by stating that providing needs-based assistance to victims of human trafficking is not costly. With renewed member states' commitments to the replenishment of the fund, the trust fund can make a greater impact and fulfill the mandate it was entrusted with by the UN General Assembly. Any contribution is a symbol of solidarity and can make a difference to the lives of individual victims of this terrible crime. I count on your support to allow the trust fund to continue its important work. Thank you. The United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund for Trafficking in persons was established at the United Nations General Assembly in 2010 to assist and to protect victims of trafficking. Through the Trust Fund, we are helping trafficking victims rebuild their lives. It's the only UN Trust Fund which addresses the specific needs of women and girl victims of human trafficking. Through its NGO partners, the Trust Fund provides direct assistance to 3,500 victims a year in over 60 countries worldwide. The UNODC Fund for the support of victims of trafficking was extremely essential. This project helped us to support hundreds of people directly and thousands of people indirectly, including the families of the victims. My name is Maya. I live in Abuja. I was once a traffic victim. Genesis House helped me out and brought me in and cleaned me up and teach me a lot of things, how to read. I make this dress myself and I learn how to dig and I learn how to write as well. The blue heart is the symbol of the fight against human trafficking and of our solidarity with trafficking victims. Over the past 10 years, UNODC's Blue Heart campaign 
has made the world aware of the terrible crime of human trafficking. This particular victims-centered approach helps make the victims of today uh, survivors of tomorrow. I love it because when I go outside seeing people, I don't feel lonely anymore. I feel great I'll be able to relate with others in this society. Excellencies, ladies and, and gentlemen, over the last decade, the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for the Victims of Human Trafficking has been an essential part of the UN global effort against trafficking in persons. It helped thousands of victims to get back on their feet and generated strong partnerships to that end. Belgium is proud to be part of that story and the main contributor to the fund. Human trafficking is still an acute problem today and one of the most severe forms of criminality. It deprives victims from their basic human rights and dignity. It affects vulnerable people, of overwhelmingly women and children, and it frequently leads to aggravated forms of exploitation, such as forced prostitution and modern slavery. The underlying causes are multi multiple, but uh, socioeconomic weaknesses are often the trigger. We need to tackle those issues as well, including in the framework of the 2030 UN Agenda on Sustainable Development. Unfortunately, Belgium has become a hub for human trafficking because of its central location in Europe. And that has been demonstrated again in 2019, when 39 Vietnamese citizens were found dead in a ref refrigerated truck in Essex after crossing the channel from Belgium. Several persons have been convicted in the United Kingdom and Vietnam already and others are being charged in our country and in France. Investigations are still ongoing. We'll ensure that all suspects are tried in close cooperation with the judicial authorities of the countries concerned. Supporting victims of human trafficking is our duty to help them rebuild their lives but also to bring traffickers to justice. It requires a smooth coordination on the ground, not only between public authorities, but also with grassroots organizations on the front line. Several NGOs providing assistance to victims of human trafficking have been accredited by the Belgian government. It allows them to be clearly identified as reliable partners, including by the judiciary and the police. In addition, our criminal policy guidelines have been updated to ensure that all parties concerned involved in fighting against human trafficking know how to cooperate with each other. A new national action plan will be adopted soon to guide our work for the next four years. To make victim support truly effective, it is crucial that victims of human trafficking are not punished for the crimes they have allegedly committed as a result of their exploitation. This non-punishment principle has been applied in Belgium since 1999 and has recently been included in our criminal code. It does not exclude liability, but prevents any sanction to be imposed. The purpose is threefold. To protect victims who have been deprived from their free will, to prevent further victimization, and to stimulate cooperation with law enforcement authorities. Victims are indeed our best allies to bring traffickers to justice. Human trafficking is mostly a transnational crime. International cooperation is needed to address it properly. The UN Voluntary Trust Fund is a meaningful example. It makes numerous initiatives possible at the local level, in different countries, with international support and for the benefit for the most of the most affected persons. I am glad that former Belgian minister Inge Vervotte has been appointed by the Secretary General at the end of last year as member of the Board of Trustees of the UN Voluntary Trust Fund. I wish her and the entire board all the best in managing the fund in the coming years. Finally, I would like to stress the importance of awareness raising regarding human trafficking and the suffering it causes. Belgium is proud to be part of the Blue Heart campaign of the UN ODC which is an efficient tool to stimulate action against human trafficking. 
Needless to say that in, in the country of the Smurfs, we like blue, especially when it illuminates the Grand Place in Brussels for the World Day against trafficking in persons. We will gladly support the campaign again this year. Thank you. Mr. Chairperson, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the oldest and simplest justification for government is as protector, protecting citizens from violence. This duty for states to protect its citizens is today based on an underlying body of international legal obligations for states, which are contained in international instruments or are developing through state practice and the case law of international courts and tribunals. At the 2005 high-level UN World Summit meeting, all member states committed to the principle of their responsibility to protect by including the principle into the outcome document of that meeting. In paragraphs 138 and 139 of the resolution, heads of state and government affirm their responsibility to protect their own populations from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity and accepted collective responsibility to encourage and help each other uphold this commitment. Mr. Chairperson, human trafficking is undisputable a crime against humanity, and it is therefore every state's responsibility to combat this horrendous crime. But we all know that combating human trafficking also requires cooperation. Cooperation between states and between states and civil society organization. It is a crime that knows no borders. And the same goes for helping and protecting victims of human trafficking. We need to take a joint responsibility also for the victims and for preventing more people from becoming victims of human trafficking. The UN provides an excellent forum for achieving these goals. And I want to once again repeat Sweden's strong support for the important work that the UN and especially UNIDC is doing to combat human trafficking and to help and protect victims of human trafficking. Mr. Chairperson, trafficking takes many despicable forms from sexual slavery to forced labor to organ removal. Sweden puts particular emphasis on trafficking for purposes of sexual exploitation, predominantly targeting women and girls, and also boys, children, that is to say. The severe harm associated with trafficking for purposes of sexual exploitation has to do with the specific ways that the bodies of trafficked women and girls are abused. There are severe, brutal, and long-term gender-specific physical gynecological and mental health harms. This very clear gender specific dim dimension needs to be recognized. Only then can we develop a gender specific targeted approach in all actions against trafficking. Sweden wants to stress the importance of not creating legal markets for human traffickers, for example, by decriminalizing sex buyers. Recognizing that most women in prostitution are from vulnerable groups and that most of the women in prostitution are either forced or lured into prostitution or have entered into prostitution because they see no other way of putting food on their table, prostitution should not and cannot be regarded as a job. Once again, remember the duty for states to protect its citizens, especially the most vulnerable. Sweden's, Swedish policy on this is very clear. Prostitution is exploitation of a person in a vulnerable situation. Exploitation through prostitution should not be supported by legal frameworks. Sweden urged more countries to adopt legislation that targets the person who buys sex and offers help to the person who is being used. Mr. Chairperson, I mentioned earlier that states need to take a joint responsibility for support and shelter to victims of human trafficking and for preventing more people from becoming victims. A very effective way to do this is to support the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Persons. The UN Trust Fund is celebrating 11 years this year. That is 11 years of crucial assistance to victims of human trafficking 
A donation to the fund provides invaluable assistance to victims, including shelter, food, medical care, legal aid, access to justice, and psychosocial support. I'm happy to say that Sweden, together with Belgium, Italy, France, and several other countries, repeatedly for several years have given financial support to the fund. Last year, Sweden provided a sum equal to approximately 560,000 US dollars. These contributions make a great difference for victims of human trafficking, and they are even more needed now in the midst of COVID-19 and without no doubt uh, post-COVID-19. To conclude my statement, combating human trafficking and providing support to victims are core obligations for states. To be successful, more, not less, international cooperation is needed. The UN is a great platform for international cooperation. Let us enhance our cooperation to secure human rights for everyone and to eradicate human trafficking and other crimes against humanity. The UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Persons is a very effective mechanism for assistance to victims globally. Donations to the fund help thousands of victims. And my wish for this year and for years to come is increased international solidarity towards victims of human trafficking manifested through donations to the UN Trust Fund. Thank you very much. Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking and Back Africa Concern has presented these few items to St. Domosco Child Protection Center. Thank you very much. And uh, one thing that we promise you is our prayers. Uh, every day at 6 o'clock, the children pray the rosary because they are under the Catholic setup. Thank you, Back Africa Concern and United Nations Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking. Thank you very much. I believe these items is going to be very useful to them, especially the COVID-19 protocols when it comes to washing of hands because we have detergents that they are going to use to clean up the sector to make it more neat. I want to say a very big thank you to Work Africa and United Nations Trust Fund for extending their helping hands to us. We want to say a very big thank you to you and God bless you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we can hear can you come my lady my dear no and we should sound so and you ever go on my own. This almost right to my share is I'm gonna ya. I'm my own what my dear my dear yet my yet you have to see. You have to see you and trap for us. I have a book for us, I want to be our my young man. Now you need Edna. Sansa, no matter what you say, but if you're here, you're for a problem. 
Many greetings to everyone all over the world and thank them for the opportunity to share our little experience during this particular Congress. My name is Benson Osaisa Vyubwaton, the Executive Director of Bulk Africa Concern. Bulk Africa Concern is an NGO based in Ghana which works for youth empowerment, green economy, agriculture, rural development, gender and social inclusion among others. In terms of trafficking in Ghana, in Ghana, Ghana is a transit, a destination and a source country and usually the victims are children, youth and women and they are mainly used for, uh, they are exploited for domestic work, organ harvesting, forced labor and sexual exploitation. The U U U the UNVTF funded project provided medical support and health assistance to victims, food items, kitchen items, utensils, clothing, bedding materials, and shelter for three care centers in Sunyani, Shaiman, and Tema Newtown, and four social groups in Kranka and Snase also provided recreational opportunities for victims of trafficking in sports and games materials. The beneficiaries of the fund or the project were rescued trafficked children, retainees, that is irregular migrants and trafficked victims who have returned, internally displaced persons, the at-risk youth, children and women. We managed to support 419 people, including 164 females and 255 males. We would like to share this simple case study of Francis, 13 years old, who was trafficked from Cote d'Ivoire to Tema with the promise of offering access to quality education in Ghana on Accra specifically. He was rather turned into salesperson hawking on the streets of Tema. Francis was rescued by CMB, our partner, and he had been he had no clothing except the dilapidated clothes that he had on at the time of the rescue. Thanks to the EUTF Trust Fund, Francis received a decent clothing, health assistance, and is currently undergoing alphabetization to be enrolled into formal education while family tracing and reintegration proceeds. Some of the challenges or lessons learned we, we share include victims of various forms of trafficking are far greater than anticipated and stronger concerted actions is needed to support adequately and substantial number. 
the issue of trafficking is not very well understood by many, especially the rural and peri-urban community members, making them susceptible to become victims or perpetrators without their knowledge. Many young people in conflict with the law are more of victims that is forced or coerced crimes than criminals. COVID-19 appears to, to be worsening the plight of many victims of trafficking. We wish to share some few best practices and for us inclusion action must take place now. Trafficking is a global issue and affects all countries around the world. There is the need for the strong involvement of CSOs and local organizations rooted in the communities in order to lead several fronts to confront the issue head on. Victim support is very, very vital in all the campaign efforts to curb trafficking in person. Thank you for the opportunity. I have a great Congress. Thank, thank you. Excellence, mesdames et messieurs, la France remercie l'ONU DC de l'invitation à participer à cet événement. La France soutient de longue date le Fonds volontaire des Nations Unies pour l'aide aux victimes de la traite des êtres humains. La traite des personnes constitue en effet l'une des atteintes les plus graves aux droits de l'homme et à la dignité humaine et une forme de la criminalité organisée en fort développement. La France fait dès lors de la lutte contre ce fléau une de ses priorités, à l'international en particulier, et se félicite que le Congrès de Kyoto puisse consacrer ses échanges, notamment à cette menace croissante, une menace qui a également profité des fragilités causées par la crise du Covid-19. Le récent rapport global annuel de l'ONU-DC témoigne des évolutions récentes inquiétantes. D'une part, la progression du nombre de victimes détectées et le constat également que sur 10 victimes identifiées dans le monde, 5 sont des femmes adultes et 2 des jeunes filles. Alors que nous nous mobilisons aujourd'hui, en ce jour de la Journée internationale de défense des droits des femmes, il est important de le rappeler. Les enfants représentent aussi une proportion en croissance des victimes, qui a triplé en 15 ans. L'exploitation sexuelle est la cause principale, mais le travail forcé est également en forte progression, à côté de la mendicité forcée et de la contrainte à commettre des délits. Dès lors, la France est pleinement engagée dans la lutte contre la traite des êtres humains, en, en particulier à travers la mise en œuvre de la politique que je résumerai par les quatre P. P pour prévention de la traite, protection des victimes, poursuite des auteurs et le développement aussi de partenariats publics privés. La France a adopté récemment un second plan d'action national pour la lutte contre la traite sur la période 2019 2021. Il suit plusieurs priorités, notamment l'identification des victimes de traite pour leur assurer une protection, la protection des mineurs, le démantèlement des réseaux criminels et la coordination de l'action publique, tant au niveau national que local. La France soutient activement, notamment financièrement, les travaux de l'ONU-DC pour favoriser la coopération judiciaire et l'assistance technique. C'est pour renforcer la protection des victimes que la France soutient depuis 2010 le Fonds volontaire de l'ONU. Jusqu'ici, ce fonds a subventionné 60 projets d'ONG couvrant 40 pays et la France est le cinquième plus gros contributeur de ce fonds. Quelques associations françaises ont été des bénéficiaires de ce fonds. La France poursuit aussi à l'international une coopération étroite avec les régions d'origine de la traite. Dans le golfe de Guinée, en Afrique, dans le cadre d'un projet mis en œuvre par Expertise France et cofinancé avec l'Union européenne, et en Europe du Sud-Est avec un programme en lien avec l'ONU-DC et l'OSCE. L'objectif, à chaque fois, est triple. Premièrement, le renforcement des capacités des États. Deuxièmement, la prévention, la protection des victimes. Et troisièmement, le démantèlement euh, des réseaux criminels. Avec un accent dans nos programmes, à chaque fois, sur la traite affectant les mineurs et euh, le rôle de la société civile à renforcer. Les ministres français et suédois des affaires étrangères se sont engagés récemment à renforcer la coopération bilatérale dans la lutte contre la traite des personnes à des fins d'exploitation sexuelle. Cet engagement se traduit par la promotion active à l'international des modèles législatifs permettant de mieux protéger les victimes et d'agir sur la demande. Également, pour sensibiliser le public, la France contribue depuis 2019 à la campagne internationale Cœur Bleu. Plus d'une trentaine d'États participent déjà activement. 
Aujourd'hui, je voudrais souligner que nous réitérons ensemble notre soutien aux actions du Fonds volontaire des Nations Unies pour la protection des victimes. Depuis dix ans à présent, il est un instrument multilatéral indispensable et très efficace. Il marque l'urgence de mieux coordonner nos actions avec la société civile pour protéger les victimes de ce crime. La France reste pleinement engagée financièrement, à nouveau en 2021, en appui au Fonds volontaire. Nous nous félicitons que cet échange puisse avoir lieu aujourd'hui, malgré la crise du Covid-19. Nous souhaitons un plein succès au Congrès de Kyoto et remercions les organisateurs pour l'invitation à participer. Je vous remercie. On behalf of the Secretariat of the UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking, it is our pleasure to welcome you today to our special event and provide you with an overview of the work of the Trust Fund. Human trafficking affects every country in the world, as countries of origin, transit or destination, or sometimes a combination of all three. The UN Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking was established by the UN General Assembly as part of its Global Plan of Action to address trafficking in persons in 2010. Managed by UNODC, the Trust Fund's mandate is to provide humanitarian, legal and financial support to victims of human trafficking through specialised NGOs around the world. Human trafficking is also recognised in the Sustainable Development Goals in the 2030 Agenda, specifically under Goals 5, 8 and 16, cutting across sectors that infringe upon gender equality, fair labour sectors, human rights, the rule of law, as well as safety and security. Since its establishment 10 years ago, The Trust Fund has received 7.8 million US dollars from a wide range of supporters, including member states, the private sector and individuals. The donor base of the fund continues to grow every year and with renewed commitment to the replenishment of the fund based on the growing demand every year, the Trust Fund can make even greater impact and reach an even greater number of victims in need of urgent support. The Trust Fund's global impact is demonstrated through its ongoing Small Grants Program, which awards multi-year grants to specialised NGOs around the world that provide critical assistance to victims. The Fund has dispersed $4.8 million in funding to over 90 NGOs in more than 50 countries and assists over 3,500 victims a year. The number of funded projects grows with every new grant cycle, as does the amount reserved for funding. In 2020, the Trust Fund launched its new emergency aid response window of its small grants program, aimed at providing swift humanitarian response to assist NGOs. As a result, in 2020 alone, the fund awarded $1.4 million in grants under its fourth grant cycle. The Trust Fund also received a record number of applications from NGOs, showing that as the number of victims around the world increases, so too does the growing demand for support. The Trust Fund has provided many life-changing interventions. It has helped NGOs operationalize key activities and provide the means for victims to reclaim their lives and be given a second chance at life. Through the work of its partners, the Trust Fund has supported the implementation and delivery of a wide range of activities, including medical, psychosocial support, job skills training, social reintegration for victims, and access to legal remedies and justice for fair compensation. Despite the Trust Fund's achievements, there is still a long way to go in meeting the needs of the most vulnerable, and the Trust Fund has learned many valuable lessons over the last 10 years. 
Looking ahead, the Trust Fund will focus on building new collaborations with both the public and private sector and continue to increase awareness of the plight of victims of human trafficking among all sectors and increase the role these sectors can play in combating this heinous crime. Public-private partnerships and resource mobilisation remain crucial for the Trust Fund to continue its important work. With a funding level of $1.5 million per year, the fund can make significant impact and reach thousands of more victims in desperate need of assistance. Through its important advocacy, events, fundraising and outreach initiatives, the Trust Fund encourages involvement from government, civil society, the corporate sector and individuals alike to increase visibility and inspire action to help prevent this heinous crime. The Trust Fund would like to sincerely thank its partners, collaborators and donors for their invaluable support, without which it could not reach the thousands of victims and survivors who benefit from the Trust Fund every year. Thank you. My name is Triveni Acharya and I am a co-founder of Rescue Foundation. Rescue Foundation is anti-human trafficking NGO. Uh, we are working in more than 20 years uh, in India and more than 6,000 children, girls and women we have rescued. Hi, I am Heather Ferreira and I have been working with Rescue Foundation for the past four years. We are grateful for United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund for victims of trafficking in persons who have been funding us for the past two years since 2018. Let me introduce to you our Boiso Home which you have been supporting for the past two years. This home started in 2007 and it, the home itself is situated among 50 acres of greenery all around. It has everything possible you would want. There is a river, there is a farm, there are trees, there are vegetables growing, there are fruits growing, there are flowers everywhere and simple 50 acres of nature surrounded at this home. I think it's a perfect environment for the girls who have gone through so much of trauma and so much of difficulties to come here and see the nature around, all the facilities around. And I think it's a time and it's a place for healing for these girls. Let me take you to the Boiser home. On an average, this partnership has supported 60 women and girls and 8 children each month for the past two years. Let me introduce to you the first activity what we do at the home is education. We have two sets of girls. Some of the girls who have already been to school and have got some formal education. And then there's another set who have never been to school and are trained for informal literacy classes. But the girls who have already gone to school, they get some extended education to complete their 10th grade or their 12th grade or go to college. We also have the computer classes where back again we have girls who are learning basics, some girls who have advanced and get advanced training in computer. Then we have the beautician course where girls are trained to do makeup, hairstyles, uh, hand art, or mehendi as we call in uh, India. We have also tailoring classes where the girls are really interested and want to be equipped for tailoring. That's a very hands-on uh, skill which the girls require and we support them with it. Besides that, there are lots of classes about dance and expressing themselves through art, through music. There are classes on martial arts also. We teach them self-defense and how to be strong and practice martial arts. The girls really love dance and uh, singing and dancing and uh, kickboxing or things like that. During the recent COVID and lockdown time and in the absence of teachers, most of our major girls stepped up and came to help us and support us and being, trainings, being trainers themselves. We equipped them with skills so that they could teach the other girls and they did a very good job of it. All the data and all the information what I give in our annual reports and in our monthly uh, or bi-monthly reports doesn't compare with actually what I see. My first hand uh, 
first hand experience of being with rescue foundation being at boyser home is that i've seen girls running around playing laughing giggling dancing at silly jokes writing poetry drawing such arts and being helpful to each other that's something which i treasure and that's something which cannot be conveyed with all the reports that go on behalf of rescue foundation Ma'am Triveni and all our staff, I take this opportunity to thank United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund of for victims of trafficking in persons, their support over the past two years. We are really grateful. It has made a difference, and we hope this partnership goes for a long time. Hi, my name is. I am 19 year old now. and i first came to rescue foundation boyser home two and a half years ago then i used to be skate but today i am a trainer and leader for the girls it it make me happy to see the girls so happy when i teach them or take their classes or just talking to then i feel blessed to be a part of this foundation before coming here i did not know any english but today i wrote this not to talk you all this and thank you for all you your support I am Heather Ferreira and I have been working with the Rescue Foundation since 2017. I am part of the fundraising team and monitor projects and conduct staff capacity building. Rescue Foundation has been working for the past 20 years with women and girls who are either trafficked or sexually exploited. After rescue the survivors are provided medical or legal aid the rehabilitation consists of education support health monitoring counseling skill trainings they are mostly restored back to their families after release As part of the National Bureau report of 2019 the state of Maharashtra has hit a all time high on crime against women and children children are subjected to forced labor begging or working in agricultural units human trafficking is prevalent in certain communities in india age old tradi traditions such as devdasi or devdasis or temple prostitutes in some states The UN Trust Fund has supported two projects the first one in Boyser in 2018 and the second in Boyser and Pune home since 2020 Boyser home mostly sees young minor girls being rescued and admitted many of them up pregnant on the other hand in Pune we see just girls mostly those who are major being rescued and admitted Many of these girls are from countries such as Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Thailand, Uzbekistan, Sikkim or Bangladesh. The first project in Boyser cared for about 60 girls and 8 children on a monthly average. The second project which has completed just 4 months has cared for over 118 girls and 10 children on an average. The Boyser project united 72 women and girls with their families in one year. The second project implemented in Boyser and Pune has united 72 women and girls and two children in the past 4 months. Challenges faced and lessons learned. It's important for us to keep an open environment to enable our girls to attend school, job skill trainings and take up jobs after they are released. Follow up of girls who are repatriated to other countries is very difficult. 
Many women and girls have been trafficked by their own families. We have seen an increase in cases of child sexual abuse over the past few years. Cases with mental and severe trauma leading to self-harm need long-term interventions. Looking ahead, amidst the COVID lockdown, the partnership with UN Trust Fund has given us an opportunity to launch the Ikatra project, which has trained and equipped our major girls, both in Boisar and Pune, with vocational training, including tailoring, martial arts, craft, and jewelry making. We plan to further empower these survivors to develop a training module be a, and be a resource for external training. Our Delhi team has been rescuing children from child labor along with our partners. We have rescued some 116 children working in factories in past two months. We plan to continue with this intervention. We at Rescue Foundation would like to thank the United Nations Trust Fund for Victims of Human Trafficking for giving us this, this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you to our NGO partners. That brings us to the close of this special event. I would like to sincerely thank UNODC and all of our co-sponsors and panelists here today for their participation in celebration of the achievements and best practices of the fund on its 10 year anniversary. Let me finish by stating that providing needs-based assistance to victims of human trafficking in their local communities is not costly. With a funding level of 1.5 million US dollars a year, the trust fund could make an even greater impact and fulfill the mandate it was entrusted with by the United Nations General Assembly. Any contribution, large or small, is a symbol of solidarity and can make a difference to the lives of individual victims of this terrible crime. I count on your solidarity to allow us to continue this important work and provide hope to many more victims for a better and brighter future to come. Thank you.